faculty, and welcome to Exchange, the TLX podcast for faculty by faculty. I'm Mike Avis, and I'm a fa- faculty facilitator with the TLX, and I'm here as usual with Nikki Monahan, faculty facilitator and coach, coming to you from our own houses. How's it going, Nikki? It's going all right, Mike. So I'm uh, I'm here in my basement as usual. I finally put the kids to bed, and this seems to be the time that I can work. So uh, it's nice, it's quiet, and this is not a very common occurrence these days in my home. <laughs> well, I'm glad those kids finally went to bed, and I am also in my home office, which, to be honest, sometimes is my living room couch, and uh, my dog Morley is sleeping right now, and I hope he stays that way through our uh, our entire exchange. So uh, I'm just doing the week check-in. Nikki, how are, uh, how are things going? Things are going pretty good, Mike. Uh, it's been, a, as always, a, a, as a busy week, but... Uh, Things are moving forward, and I'm really excited for us to have a another conversation to share with our faculty. So we decided to call this podcast Teaching in a Time of Uncertainty, but I also like to call it The Adrenaline is Worn Off, Now What? <laughs> so how would you describe what's going on in the college and with faculty right now? Well, it's a bit of a different time now because our immediate crisis is over the crisis that I think of when we had one week to help faculty get up and running to moving to remote learning and uh, people have been doing that and it may have been a bit of a scramble but by now faculty have some kind of plan for getting through this term and many have told us that they're really enjoying their new ways of engaging with learners remotely. Uh, At the same time, I call this teaching in a time of uncertainty because I think some new anxieties are arising. Maybe people are asking themselves, well, how long will this last? Uh, I know my dog keeps looking at me and saying, aren't you going to work yet? I mean, too much of a good thing, maybe. But people are asking those questions. Uh, what's going to happen with the summer term? And how are my students managing? And what about my international students, the ones who stayed here and, and the ones who went home? How are they faring? So there are a lot of questions that are popping up in people's minds these days. Yeah, and it certainly doesn't help that, uh, or just the uncertainty of everything, that what we're getting from the city, what we're getting from the news media, you know, the, the notifications we're getting from 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 the college as well, it's really hard to figure out where we stand. And I know that, you know, right now the push has been, let's just survive the end of this term, but the next term is around the corner. And I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, so there's, it's one thing to survive teaching online for two weeks, but what if it's another two or three months and I have to do my whole course online? And I think that is certainly, you know, can cause some anxiety. For sure. And, and you're right. It's a time of change and the ch- change seems, uh, a bit unpredictable, and when uh, things are unpredictable, that uh, that raises questions for people. So is there anything you've noticed particularly or specifically in the last week with your conversations with faculty? Well, Mike, I'm, I'm developing this very non-scientific theory. Um, I'm calling it my theory of 10. Uh, and, and one of the things I've noticed in quite a number of uh, exchanges and conversations with faculty is that You know, in in times of uncertainty, people are who they are kind of exponentially or times 10. So if you struggle with anxiety, like a lot of our students do, uh, your anxiety may be way ramped up right now. Um, And maybe this plays itself out in your work with your colleagues or with whoever's at home. Um, or if you're the kind of person who sometimes procrastinates or feels distracted, hard, having a, has a hard time focusing and being attentive, then maybe getting down to work when you're on your own at home, maybe that much harder. Um, maybe you're lucky that you're able to just focus on the work right in front of you and you move forward step by step and if that's the kind of person you are, then that's probably how you're coping right now. Um, and what I've really noticed and been so delighted to see is that if your tendency is to reach out and support and care for yourself and your colleagues, 
Well, you know, Mike, we, we've seen so many of uh, our faculty doing that uh, really in state. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been an amazing thing to see. It makes me, thinking about your uh, theory of 10, your non-scientific theory, it makes me think, wow, I wonder which one of those I am. Where <laughs> I sit in, I wonder how you identify which one of, how, how what, what part of you is amped up times 10. I wonder what that is. Um, certainly uh, I've noticed. Mike, my, ex- my experience of you is that, that you're somebody who's... Uh, uh, passionate about your work and passionate about helping other people do their work and and I've seen that times 10 with you. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure if that's last I'm, week or so. I'm not sure if that's a great thing ramp, ramping up my passion times 10. I'm not sure if that's great <laughs> maybe. Uh, but one thing I've noticed certainly about that is how it manifests with working with colleagues and students. So mm-hmm. a lot of the work that we're doing now is coordinating, you know, programs, coordinating lesson planning, coordinating all these things with other faculty members. And certainly part of that challenge is not just how am I going to connect with my students, but how am I going to work in a team with other faculty members remotely with all of this other thing, all these other things kind of circulating around. And I think that is a real challenge in itself. Absolutely. And, And there are definitely complex layers of these new working realities. And, and I think it's, um, it's important for us to recognize what these new realities are. I had one faculty member who was just delighted because she had finished her first uh, uh, Collaborate Ultra session, and she said, geez, there were more students with me remotely than there were in my last face-to-face class, and she was really excited about that. But there are also some extra strains, maybe, for some of us working remotely. So... Uh, again, there's there's all kinds of proficiency among our faculty members in using technology. But you know, if you were someone who had a, a learning curve, maybe you're feeling a little bit less confident, or yeah, maybe certainly. you're making some mm-hmm. some mistakes, or and not being sure if the technology is going to work 100% of the time uh, can make us. Uh, feel really vulnerable. And, and, and also having to rely on technology to solve your technology is just another <laughs> added piece to that, to that strain of working remotely, right? So if you're used to going into a place and talking to a, talking to someone sitting next to them, now you have to rely on, on technology to do that. So that, that certainly can add a strain. What else is there? Well, and I'm also thinking about, uh, you know, even what people's working conditions are like at home and, and, you know, we we have, when we go into our spaces in the college, some predictability. Uh, maybe your office isn't always quiet, or maybe you don't have the classroom, you you know, the ideal classroom you would have chosen. But working conditions at home are really variable. I'm thinking about people like yourself who now have uh, kids at home, and maybe you're trying to work and homeschool or um, maybe you're used to seeing your partner at the end of the day and now they're there 24 seven and, and that might be a good thing or that might be wearing, or, you know, maybe you live alone, uh, and now you're working alone and, uh, the college has been a place where you've gone for social contact. that's actually face to face and not virtual. So, mm-hmm. uh, these are new working realities and, and, um, uh, this is a period of adjustment to those working realities. Plus, there's there's also the the aspect of just physically and mentally taking care of yourself. You know, uh, especially with the physical isolation that we are practicing, all of us. Mm-hmm. I hope um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of time where you're, at, like as you said, either crammed in a house with a bunch of people, which is my case, or maybe you're <laughs> maybe you're just you don't have that that social contact that you'd like. So. The, the reality is right now, mental health and physical health are really important, and taking care of that's also really important. Absolutely. And, you know, while we are really depending on this technology, there's a way in which uh, working remotely can, you know, lead us down the path of uh, working all the time. You know, there maybe is a tendency for the workday to become the whole day or the whole night you know i'm aware we're doing this at 9 30 at night while your kids are in bed and that's when it's quiet and so um you know establishing some some boundaries for work and really taking care of our physical and mental health is is really important so establishing some 
you know, routines for the work day or some structures or finding ways to take uh, breaks from work is really important. Okay. So that, that leads us to the, I think the real reason for this podcast is Mm -hmm. yes, all these realities are here. Yes. We're coping with a lot of them or maybe not coping as well as we could. Mm -hmm. How do we manage it all? What do we do? How do we work through this uh, challenging time right now? Well, given that I knew we were going to have this conversation tonight, Mike, I reached out uh, and had a conversation this afternoon with one of my favorite mental health experts, uh, Ann Bernardo, one of our college's uh, counselors. And she had some really good, uh, simple uh, suggestions to to share with our, our faculty listening audience. And, and the first one um, is really try not to catastrophize. If if we spend a lot of time on the news, uh, and I know I'm a bit of a news junkie, but I'm trying to, you know, not uh, be immersed all the time. But it's easy to think about worst case scenarios, and 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 that can really affect our our bodies and and uh, ramp up our stress. So, you know, one of Anne's pieces of advice was really try try not to catastrophize. Um, this is also really a time to to be kind to ourselves and and gentle with ourselves. And one of the practices that uh, uh, that I've engaged in for some time, um, given my background in positive psychology, is is really a practice of monitoring my own self talk, especially negative talk. And mm-hmm. when I when my own anxiety ramps up, I notice I'm saying, "Oh, what if this? Or what if that? Or?" I should do this. And, and, you know, and we really have to turn the volume down on our, our negative self-talk. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that you can get carried away with the, I like the idea that the, the first one you brought up about catastrophizing is, you know, you get that news cycle running, you're working in your home office or wherever you're working at the kitchen table and you've got that news running, you know, the whole time that you're working. Yeah. And that certainly can affect, you know, your anxiety levels. It can affect how you how you relate to other people, your colleagues. So certainly that's a, that's a really good um, thing to keep an eye on. So what else is there that we can do? Well, um, one of the things that you know a lot about is uh, there's a different experience when you're working from home when you have uh, small children around. And I know there's been lots of discussion on the news uh, about should, should parents be homeschooling at this time? And, you know, how do you do a full-time job and, and, uh, take on the job of being your child's teacher as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the advice that I got from Anne really was to, again, not expect uh, perfection of yourself as a, as a teacher to your kids, you know, even, even one hour a day of schoolwork uh, is is more than enough, but there are lots of ways for uh, kids to, to learn when they're at home. Um, They learn through play You know, if you bake together, you can learn math and reading. Uh, If you spend time uh, playing board games, um, all of those things are ways to to keep your kids engaged without having to, you know, drill down on a a really um, uh, formal curriculum. In in a lot of the conversations, just going with that, and a lot of conversations I've had with faculty in the last week or two is... um, conferencing and talking like we are right now on teams and everyone else, a lot of other people are using different apps and Facebook and face, sorry, FaceTime and zoom and all those. Cause I've seen so many little heads pop up, you know, from behind, (laughs) behind people trying to get their parents' attention. So yeah, paying attention to, you know, not only yourself, but your kids and your family while you're trying to work is also really important. So one of the things I've done, I've started to do is just do that is just walk away from the computer close it, get up, go outside. I've got a small little backyard, but it's big enough to do some, you know, to have some fun and walk outside, spend some time, an hour with the kids and then back down to my basement bunker. But, um, there were a couple other things I wanted to just add to that list. I know, uh, Jessica Patterson from, um, Academic Excellence, she's got a team on mindfulness and well-being, a group on teams, and they meet on Mondays and Fridays. And that's been I know a lot of people have been enjoying that. So mindfulness and just meditation and just thinking and relaxing and thinking about, as you said, your what ifs and your negative self-talk, that's a really good way to 
to start to deal with that. There's also an yeah, app. Je- Jess has really built a lovely community. She showed some tremendous leadership and in, uh, in helping people find different forms of practice that that can keep us really present, focused, and centered. And you know, and she offers those sessions uh, on Mondays and Fridays now. And it, and it's in the middle of the day, so I use it as a way to take a break from my morning work and my afternoon work and and just take a pause. And we will we'll post that link at the bottom of uh, this podcast, whether it's on YouTube or SoundCloud, and so you can link into her on Teams. There's also Great. an app called Calm that that's really good that you can use mm-hmm. just to sort of give yourself a 15 minute break and just sort of center yourself. Um, but one of the things that I one of the, my favorite solutions is talking to talking to colleagues and talking Absolutely. to you, Nikki. This morning I have ha- I was having a moment of I'm ready to jump off a cliff. And 10 minutes of conversation with you was more than enough to get me centered, to make me think about, you know, do things that you're good at, do things that are important, don't get stuck in everything else. So really just talking to colleagues. And one thing I wanted to mention about that is um, Microsoft Teams seems to be a place where that's now happening. If you're not on the Teams Mm -hmm. site, we have seen a massive spike in the use of Teams. So maybe about three weeks ago before this all started to happen, We had maybe on the TLX team site, maybe 100 active users, um, you know, on a good day would be 100. The last three or four days, we've had 700 active users. So a lot of people have signed up. A lot of people are using Teams to talk to each other, to to compare ideas, to encourage each other, to to share success stories and challenges. So... That team is yeah, there. It's a, it's a great resource, Mike, and it really is a place where we are uh, building community. And every single day I see faculty reaching out yeah. to share ideas, support one another, troubleshoot, uh, problem solve, etc. cetera. So uh, while we can't be physically close, we certainly have lots of ways to, to stay connected uh, with our colleagues. Right. So we'll, we'll post that link as well to uh, the TLX team on TLX group on Teams. So you can, if you don't have that connection, that's a really good place to start just talking to colleagues about some of the challenges that we've discussed. Great. So I guess, uh, you know, we've put in some time. I think my, hopefully everyone's asleep. It's time for me to go and take my, my time away from technology. Uh, And time for me to take my dog out for his final go of the night. All right. So Nikki, it's as always, it's been great to chat with you. Always great to chat with you, Mike. And, you know, our final message for today for this podcast, Teaching in Times of Uncertainty, uh, stay connected with one another. Uh, Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of your families. uh, Keep teaching and keep learning. And stay tuned for our next episode of 